Vaishnavi has a query. Vaishnavi, can you go first? Uh, yes, sir. Is it that uh, each individual motor protein uh, moves in a particular route and carries a particular type of vesicle? Is it uh, very unique and specific or can a single motor protein perform different functions? Yeah. So a single motor protein could do different functions, right? So something that moved from here to this particular point uh, now has the capability to go bind two different strands of say actin. I mean, here it walked and carried something, reached a certain point. Um, and, and now here it does a slightly different function because that's what's required. So there is no direct evidence right now to suggest that a motor protein that carries a vesicle um, and uh, carries, you know, that just carried a vesicle of a particular kind um, will carry only that kind of vesicle and will not do anything else. Right? So there is flexibility here and they are used as per their requirements. Right? So, so how do they know what to do or uh, where to buy in? They, 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 they don't actually. So that is the, you know, that is why, for example, directionality, when we talked about, um, I think we are inherently thinking they somehow know, okay, this is plus N, this is minus N, this is inside, that is outside. If it's a, you know, very small motor protein in the context of, a big cell, you know, the only thing it sees and knows is its immediate domain, right? So it is responding and doing things uh, in the context of that immediate domain. So that's why the context of size, for example, when you looked at the microtubule strand and a motor protein walking on it, you can see what the size of the strand is likely to be and how big or small the motor protein is. So the motor protein is not thinking plus end, I have to reach this. Uh -huh. Motor protein, till I have energy, I will keep doing this. And as I keep doing this, you know, whatever I am bound, I will carry and walk in one particular direction, you know. So there are um, things that can regulate the rate at which motor proteins move. Uh, different motor proteins could have, as I said, the size of the stroke could be variable. Uh, the speed, therefore, at which they move things could be variable. Uh, there are regulatory mechanisms that suggest that depending upon the availability of a motor protein, which means if this is a particular pathway that requires things to be carried very quickly, uh, inherently there are more proto motor proteins available there that can move things faster, right? As compared to, uh, you know, some other part, um, you know, site inside the cell. So a lot of it is governed by the local concentrations of things, including motor proteins uh, and the kind of cargo that exists around them right um, so so there isn't uh, anything to suggest that uh, you know this motor protein actually goes looking for a specific kind of cargo it's doing its thing depending upon the availability of cargo availability of motor protein there is binding and once binding happens you know they do their thing okay, okay. Um, medha next to you so my question is kind of related to Vaishnavis in the sense like what helps to um, so if you have a vesicle that's starting off at one end of the cell and mm -hmm. say it needs to get to like a very specific organ and mm -hmm. the other does it follow a path that is tailor made for it or like simplistically is it like different stops along the uh, cytoskeleton path it, where a lot of different yeah, ones it, like it could, it, see it could be um, different stops uh, it could be uh, a very direct route. It depends on what's happening at the cell at that point of time. It depends on, you know, what kind of motor proteins are available and bound, um, you know, to that particular cytoskeletal component at that point of time. So some of this is fine tuned by, you know, the availability of things and that availability of availability of things could be controlled by stimuli that is coming from different places. Uh, but um, it's, it's the ability of the, you know, the cargo to bind to the motor protein is also controlled in the sense that this may bind to only certain kinds of motor proteins. So there may be, so one, for example, way to think about this is suppose there are plus end and minus end motor proteins present, right? And you want this cargo to go towards the plus end. One way to regulate this would be to change, uh, to make sure that there are more plus end binding proteins on the surface of the vesicle right? Which means the number of uh, motor proteins that will be engaged, uh, which are plus N directed versus minus N directors uh, directed will be shifted towards the plus N. 
and this cargo could move in that direction. The other way to do this is regulate the availability of motor proteins itself, right? So that means you can have, uh, you know, if there is a way to enrich or bring together plus and motor proteins in that particular area, uh, have 10 times more plus and motor proteins than minus and motor proteins, even if the cargo distribution on the surface is such that they can bind plus or minus. The fact that the motor protein density is variable could allow for movement to take place in one direction. So there could be many ways to do this, but it isn't clear if there is, um, you know, a very defined purpose to say that, you know, I am this vesicle, I'm going to go find this particular motor protein. Um, and, and I know this motor protein is not going to talk to anything else and will just walk with me. Right. Uh, suppose, for example, a vesicle is being carried and everything is about relative affinities. Everything is about and you've seen that, you know, across the board. Right. Um, so what if this motor protein, uh, you know, encounters another cargo that binds with significantly more affinity? Does this motor protein, once it holds this cargo, does it kind of keep holding it without letting it go? Or that, does that depend on the relative affinity? which means that, you know, it will go apart, come back, go apart, come back. And if that is happening, right, uh, if there is now a cargo that binds and doesn't let go, right, um, can this motor protein actually shift, like carry something to a particular point and then kind of, you know, go bind something else? It's possible, right? So all those permutations combinations are happening. And despite those permutations combinations, you know, the cell is able to drive movement of something in a direction that it needs. And that's the remarkable uh, aspect of this. So how does it understand all the variables to achieve the endpoint it needs it is still a mystery, right? So we, we don't completely understand that. Prerna, can you go next? Oh, so you mentioned that different cells could have different flavors of myosins and diakinesins and uh, so uh, i want to ask that is it that cell inherently carries this information that okay this uh, variety of myosin it has to make or the, this number or it, is it yeah, like it, it develops over time or is it yeah. like it can also change over time that yeah, yeah, yeah good question good question it's possible that it can change over time it's possible that, uh, you know, obviously these are all regulated by genes. The expression of genes is controlled and the expression of genes is controlled by many parameters. So depending upon where the cell is in the cell cycle, pro, you know, for example, the regulation of gene expression is affected. Whether it is seeing an external stimuli, not seeing an external stimuli could regulate gene expression. There's so many parameters, right? So, but inherently for a cell, depending upon, uh, you know, how it is regulated, the expression of certain motor proteins is happening. Does it mean it cannot express a certain motor protein at all? Maybe. Uh, maybe it has something that has blocked that expression. Uh, it could also be that uh, the expression of certain motor proteins happens at very specific times. And, and that also could be a regulatory factor here, right? So, so it is fine-tuned in more than one ways, right? Um, but that's the remarkable thing that you know, the more we understand about this, we realize that, um, or we at least uh, begin to appreciate the complexity with which the cell is working. And for all these, you know, hundreds of thousands of pieces to kind of all have these variable varying capabilities to be regulated by many ways, um, for a particular class of proteins to come together and do something very, very unique, for the cell at a given particular point of time requires a level of fine tuning that is just amazing right and and that's that's what the cell is able to do we don't completely understand everything about how that control is mediated but we knew it, we know it exists right and as we understand more we realize how complex that is how subtle it can be and how many different ways it can be controlled okay sanchit next query yeah, sir, uh, I just wanted to ask what happens 
when a motor protein reaches an end mm. so good question good question yeah so so see one possibility is that the motor protein um, you know just hands over the cargo to something because now something else is binding the cargo with much greater affinity than the motor protein so it's like does the motor protein keep walking and the cargo is stuck here and then at some point of time the cargo just detaches we actually fully don't know right we don't know what exactly is the handing over mechanism like uh, we also don't know what happens does the motor protein then just keep on walking um, you know does it pause for some time now see as long as energy is available it has the capability to keep going right so chances are it keeps going you know so are there motor proteins that are empty with no cargo that are walking around probably there are but considering the crowding that exists does a motor motor protein really have that much space to walk for a significant amount of time without actually binding anything it probably unlikely right yeah. so so some of this you know because we had limited by what we can see and how we can see uh, you know we we are only now beginning to understand the fact that two motor proto pro motor proteins can tug on the same vesicle and pull in this direction and this direction and the relative force with which they pull and the number of pro motor proteins that are attached which will eventually determine which direction it goes it was discovered maybe a few years ago four five years ago right uh, roop's lab here in roop malik's lab in uh, in iit bombay he roop was in tifr before uh, roop's lab uh, is uh, you know they study lipid droplets and and their ability to bind to motor proteins and they made this discovery using those lipid droplets right so so it's um, there is um, a lot of this is still being discovered okay amrita mushu am i saying that correct yes sir uh, so after the uh, kinesin molecule goes to the plus end with the vesicle uh, how is it recycled again for further usage right so so this is kind of the question of what happens to the dropping off of the cargo um, i think uh, you know there could be many ways to do this possible one possibility is that the motor protein is just broken up there and then you know brought back it's possible that uh, that motor protein now goes to um a different strand and starts doing something else uh, we don't completely know we don't completely know whether there is a, a, a like a, a defined mechanism says that says that only this will happen okay so it could be very specific and this is among the questions that people are trying to find out right saying you know how do you optimize functionality if it goes in one end now if it had the capability to walk back the same way okay and, and now suddenly become a motor protein that goes this direction okay maybe uh, you know this will be of interest uh, but but that doesn't happen for most of the motor proteins right so what does it do it just falls off the edge we actually don't know we actually don't know thairia next question morning sir you uh, responded to uh, vaishnavi and uh, meza regarding the uh direction quick of question, travel of quick question get to yes. the question <laughs> okay yeah a uh, basic thing is uh, you said that uh, motor protein travel is independent of the larger picture it is governed by the local uh, surroundings of a motor right. protein right. right so is it like an emergent phenomena could be right and if you know what an emergent phenomena is which probably many people may not know here Uh, you know it could be it could be right so so the short answer is yes right? okay um, okay next question um sir hello sir yes yes my sir. name is christopher sir uh, sir so uh, okay uh, ah, okay okay yeah, yeah go go for it sir, so my question was about actin and myosin i've heard them in the context of muscle contraction is this right. the exact same thing or like right, right, right. yes yes are, it's the same thing so do they work very similarly in both cases or do is there like differences in the motor protein version or no no they do actually the same thing all they do is that they bind and they move right and yeah. and in in the context of muscle that's what drives everything and this is the remarkable thing that these systems are repurposed in so many different ways the microtubule network that goes from the center towards the out and acts as a highway in cells in a dividing cell does this and then pulls right same machinery same players completely different outcomes so okay. how does the 
So how does the myosin fil uh, organize into filaments? Like they do it, it doesn't. It binds the actin only. It is okay. largely, you know, connecting actin strands. Oh, 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 fine. So they don't right. yeah. become filaments. No, no, they don't. They don't. They don't. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Hmm? okay. Anay, next query. Very so, quick. Very quick. Uh, as you said that there is also traffic on the uh, microtubules and the uh, and there are like there could be multiple motor proteins on the same microtubule mm -hmm. so um, how does one microtubule uh, my, uh, motor protein know that uh, there is another motor protein it probably like, doesn't does it, it probably doesn't right it just does its bit now if there is something that affects it only then does it know like, for example, if there is a cargo and this motor protein is walking with it, okay, and there is another motor protein that binds it and walks with it in the other direction, it's only when that it's it's not able to move forward will it probably not know, but at least feel the fact that it's actually getting pulled in the other direction. So the, the it is not trying to find out what's around it and how to, it does its own thing, right? And in the process, if something else happens, its functionality is affected. And that's all there is to it.